Today I will show you how to create this big head effect in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how to create this really easy and interesting big head effect. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, this will be our image for today and as you can see it's myself as a model. I shoot this one hour ago here in the studio and before we start I just want to tell you a few things. When you want to achieve this effect, a big head effect, just big head effect, you don't have to worry about pretty much anything. But if you want to have something uh, added to that, that effect as I want to add here my, my, head on my, uh, my hand on my head here, then you need to think in advance to make a gap between a head and a palm, you know, because you want to make your head larger and you want to fill the gap with actually the head. So that's why I, uh, I'm i holding the arm a little bit like away from, from a head. So first thing what we want to do here is to extract the model, uh, in this case myself, out of the background. To save the time for this tutorial, I already did that before I start recording this and as you can see, I have myself extracted out of the background. This extraction is not completely perfect. You can see here some gray spots from the background and here too. But I don't have to worry about that because I will anyway put the gray background behind myself and this will not be visible. So when I have myself extracted here, this will be just for backup. I will create a new solid color layer as a background and I will choose something like this gray tone. Press OK and as you can see now this is like a perfect extraction. So maybe I have to fix some parts but actually I don't want to bother for this tutorial with, with that. So the next step is to make a copy of a head. Let's go to our body layer. Let's name this main layer. OK and I will use the lasso tool. You can use a pen tool or quick selection tool or I don't know rectangular tool, anything you, you want just to make selection around the head. It doesn't need to be so perfect like so. And I will press Ctrl or Command J on a keyboard to make a copy of that selection. So like this. And I will rename this to head. Okay, and I will actually name this to big head. All right, and now I have a copy of my head. Now I need to transform it to press Ctrl Command T and make this head a little bit bigger. Right, we can do a few things. We can lower the opacity here just to see the position of a head and we can make it bigger as we want. We can make it smaller or bigger or even bigger. Don't worry about the arm, we can move it later. I will show you how, but first let's decide about the size. Maybe, maybe something like if you don't want to move the arm, then the size would be something like so. Let's bring this 100% and let's see the effect. It's not bad actually, but I will actually move the arm a little bit. So let's use this size and press enter on a keyboard when you're done with transforming. Now I will make a mask here to clean some edges. Okay, I will use brush, be on a keyboard for brush. I will choose a little bit harder brush around 70 or so. And I will use smaller brush maybe like so. All right, and black color and just remove this part of maybe a little bit harder like 80 and just remove this part of a neck here because I don't want that to be visible and it will be much easier if I shave before this photo shooting because I will not ha have problem with this beard hair but it won't be so visible at the end so i will not worry about this okay almost done let me see here it's okay and let's make this a little bit smaller and just reshape this part right like so and as you can see i already have a big head now we can reposition this head anywhere we want for example let me see for example like so it's not bad maybe with the arrows we can move it left or right 
maybe a little bit to the left and down, I don't know, let me see. Mm, it's personal preference, maybe a little bit more down, maybe, maybe like so, maybe like so, it's really nice. All right, and now we are finished with the head size and position. The next step will be to play with the arm position. So to do that, let's go to the main layer here and let's go to edit and puppet form. If you're not familiar with the puppet form tool, I have a tutorial about that. You can find a link right here and please watch that too. All right, now that I'm in puppet form tool, I will expand this a little bit like so and I will hide the mesh. I will make a few pins, first one here, first one here, second one right here, and then to fix this mesh to the background, a few more here. Okay, now we can go here, press Alt or Option key and move, move the arm. Or we can just move this like so, and maybe I will move it right about here, like so and press OK when I'm done with that. Now I need to go to my head layer again, to this mask, and to mask, to bring back this part, part of the palm. So I will first load this selection from the main layer. How to do that? Just press Ctrl Command key on the keyboard and click on that and you will load that selection. Go to the big head layer mask here and with the white brush, just just a second, we need to paint this actually with a black brush to hide the parts of the head, like so, and then Control command d to deselect. And now let's fix this a little bit. I need to get rid of this, of this uh, finger with the white color. If you want, you can rotate your canvas here by pressing R on a keyboard and just rotate it to maybe better fit your drawing uh, angle, like so. Right, and fix a little bit more here, these gray spots, and a little bit more here, like so. Right, almost done. And let me see, let's fix this even more, like so. And here, if you miss something, you can always press X on a keyboard to swap the colors and paint back some details from a mask. Right, let me see. And here we can make this a little bit nicer, like so. But because this image will not be so big, it's for social networks. I will not go so much here into details. Let's press escape and unzoom it. And this is now really, really nice. Next thing what we need to uh, fix is this part here. And let me see if I delete this. Just to have impression that my palm is actually laying on the head like so. That's really, really nice. All right. Now let's do some other stuff. Let's dodge this part of the head, of the palm actually, to make it darker to have better impression that it's laying on head. So to do that, I will use curves, clip it on this layer by clicking on this icon here and make it darker, but actually here, here to the main layer and make it darker like so maybe. All right, and now I have uh, I can see a few mistakes here that it's great. Let's go back to the big head layer and let's fix this. Let's fix this with again brush, white color and like so. Okay. Again, if you're doing this for social networks, then you don't need to be so precise, but depends of the situation, right? Like so, it's really, really nice. It's much better. Now let's invert this mask to have it black, like so. And then I will use a brush, really soft one, hardness to zero, right? And maybe opacity around 10% and 
and with the black color, actually with the white color, I will paint here on this part of the fingers, this down part here to make it a little bit darker to have impression that it's touching the head here, right? And I like to use a lower opacity and to build up the shadow because if I use maybe 50% opacity, uh, it will be a little bit more fake. All right, like so, press escape, let me see. That's really, really nice. And let me see before and after, before and after, before and after, it's much, much better. I really like this. And we're basically done with this effect. That's all we want to achieve. But if you want to make this image a little bit Mm, to, to a little bit more uh, interesting to pop out a little bit more then you can use for example dodge and burn technique and if you don't know how to dodge and burn and again you can find a link right here please watch the tutorial and you can use that technique to make this image even more interesting so to do that i will first make my dodge and burn tools i will use curves for that and i will use one for dodge one for burn like so, and let's name this dodge, and this will be burn, right? But before I use those two tools, I want to merge everything here. Actually, I can group this into one layer. Press Control Command G, and now I have body here. And I will clip both those dodge and burn layer to a body group, and now I will affect only the, the body, not the background. So let's dodge it. I will use 5% opacity brush, really, really soft. And I will start to dodge maybe first eyes a little bit here. Just to make it a little bit brighter. And this process can last maybe 15 minutes or half an hour, depend on the amount of detail you want to, to add here. And I will not uh, not let you wait me to finish it. This I will actually fast forward it, but let me add uh, tell you some guidance here. Uh, I will dodge, make brighter parts that are that are already bright, like this highlights on the nose, this part here and here, this part of uh, lips here a little bit brighter, and then I will burn, make darker those parts that are already darker. So I will actually made make some contrast on an image to pop up the contrast even more. So I will now fast forward this and see you in a few seconds. Alright guys, now that I finished some dodge and burn here, let me show before and after. This is before, this is after, before and after of course. I can, I could even uh, do this even more to have even mm, stronger effect. So, but I, will, uh, but I will stop here and I will add just one more thing. I will add a shadow from the head right here because as you can see here we have a shadow here that is going on the neck. And here the head, it's, uh, the shadow, it's not visible. So I will use this burn uh, layer and I will just add a little bit of the shadow right here, like so, just to have that. Let me see now, now before that and after that, it's really, really nice. And let's fix just this part a little bit. And basically, basically we are done. Of course, you can dodge and burn this even more, but I will stop here. Next step, what I want to do is to merge everything together with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac. And I want to go to Filter and Nick Collection, Color FX Pro. So let's let's do this. Let's add a little bit of Pro Contrast and Detail Extraction and a few more things, and we are we are done. So let's go to the Pro Contrast. You will have actually this tab. I have my favorite some here. 
pro contrast and I will like to use dynamic contrast, right? Like so. And I will add another filter that will be detail extractor and I will first zero this out, zero this out and let me see. First, I want to add a contrast like so maybe and add a little bit of a detail extractor, something, something like so. It's, it's too much, like so, let me see. Before and after, before and after, really, really nice. And now in a few seconds, we will have our result. It's like this. And I can add a layer mask here. And if I want, I can with a black color and a brush remove the effect in some parts that I maybe don't like. Maybe here on, on the face and here. Maybe it's too strong. And here a little bit. And let me see. Like so, let me see now, before and after, before and after, really, really nice. One more thing, what I can do here, it's again to merge everything together, shift control, alt E or shift command option E on the Mac and go to the filter and camera row filter just to add a little bit more color correction to this image. So I would like to add a little bit more of the contrast, open the shadow just a touch and add the blacks like so and maybe clarity just a touch lower the saturation add the vibrance like so and now i will go to fx tab add a little bit of the haze and i will add some vignette here feather this like so and maybe to split toning effect and i like to add a bluish tone in, in the shadows like like so why not maybe a touch of a yellow to highlights and let's sharpen it a little bit like so let me see before and after before and after with the p on a keyboard you can switch be be uh, before, uh, between before and after like this and maybe to add a little bit more of saturation to the image okay before and after before and after let's press okay and that's it that's our effect this is before all these corrections with the filters and this is after. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new out of it. Now that you know how to create this really fun and crazy effect in Photoshop, this big head effect in Photoshop, you can have a lot of fun with your images or images of your friends and family. Be creative, uh, experiment, maybe you can create even bigger head that it's so big and heavy that your neck uh, cannot support it, that you need to support it with your arms or I don't know, some other crazy and fun ideas. Practice, experiment, have fun. If you have some questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye.